It's Wednesday, December 21st, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski with the latest local news today, including a legal battle over a winter solstice sign, a bus driver fired after driving erratically, and much more. Frank Granito has your forecast and a Nutmeg Sports update, and Donald Ang joins us later to take a look back on this day in history. We also have a special guest coming up later in the show, joining us from Silver Hill Hospital to talk about securing medications this holiday season. But first, on to today's news. Shelton Superintendent Dr. Chris Clowett said a bus driver who was transporting intermediate school students Friday afternoon will never drive in Shelton again after he was arrested mid-route for erratic driving. A student on the bus Snapchatted several photos of the driver before posting them to social media and sharing them with their parents. Dr. Clowett said, we felt he was putting our students in danger and so we had, in consultation with police, him stopped and removed from that bus. Dr. Clowett said students on the bus contacted their parents, who then contacted the school and the superintendent, who ultimately contacted police and the bus company to have that driver removed. Dr. Clowett said, we subcontract our drivers, so they're not our employees, he said. The bus drivers are employees of Landmark Transportation, and our job is to make sure the kids are safe, and they were not doing that. Well, you can get much more on that story at sheltonherald.com. And Reading police are investigating what they called a forcible rape that occurred in Reading sometime before 3 in the morning on Saturday, December 17th. Reading officers were called to St. Vincent's Medical Center in Bridgeport early Saturday morning, where a woman in her 30s from New York reported that she had been raped. The case is in the initial steps of investigation, Police Chief Doug Fuchs said, and no more information is available at the moment. But check for updates at thereadingpilot.com. And Shelton police made two prostitution-related arrests following reports of suspicious activity at a Bridgeport Avenue hotel Monday afternoon. On December 19th, Shelton police responded to reports of heavy foot traffic in and out of a specific room on the third floor of a hotel. According to police, the hotel manager stated that the majority of the visitors to the room were men. When police responded, they found Leslie Mitchell Reyes, 20 years old of Bridgeport, and 51-year-old Albert Beckwith of Beacon Falls. The officer's investigation revealed that Beckwith had solicited Reyes for sex on the internet for a predetermined price and later met her at the hotel. Reyes was charged with prostitution and released on a $1,000 bond. Beckwith was charged with patronizing a prostitute and also released on a $1,000 bond. And in other Shelton news, one local man won a legal battle against the city for the right to place a winter solstice sign in the middle of Huntington Green holiday season decorations were burnt out so they decided to make a replacement that winter solstice sign now stands on the far side of the huntington green and reads at this season of winter solstice may reason prevail it goes on to say there are no gods no devils no angels no heaven or hell there is only our natural world it continues on to say religion is but myth and superstition that hardens hearts and enslaves minds much more on that story at sheltonherald.com and the Department of Consumer Protection has seen the number of skimming-related incidents reported nearly double this year compared to 2015. Consumer Protection is now seeing it in the past year appearing in gas pumps and are working hard to make sure consumers and others know what to look for. They say here's what you can do at the pump to protect yourself during holiday travel. First, make sure the seal on each gas pump isn't broken or tampered with. If it is, that indicates that someone not authorized to inspect the gas pump is tampered with it. They also say if you see a pump that you believe may have been tampered with, don't use it. You should report the pump's issue to the gas station attendant. Use your credit card or pay by cash. If you pay by cash, you won't fall victim to the skimming attack. And if you use your credit card, you'll be able to recover those funds more easily. They also suggest paying inside for gas. It reduces your risk of falling victim to a skimming attack significantly because it's much harder for fraudsters to place a skimmer indoors near the cash register. And the Weston Board of Selectmen has approved a supplemental appropriation for $15,000 for care of birds rescued from 82 Newtown Turnpike in an animal hoarding case dating back to September. The appropriation is contingent on approval from the Board of Finance at its January meeting and developing a written agreement with Rhode Island Parrot Rescue, the organization housing more than 100 exotic birds taken from that Weston home. 
In October, the boards voted to approve an appropriation of over $21,000 to go to that rescue group. However, Weston's animal control officer Mark Harper said that there were some wrenches thrown into the gears regarding financial negotiations with that rescue organization. He said negotiations may get very serious and very complicated very quickly. There's more on that story at thewestonforum.com. And two men are in custody after a string of burglaries in the area. On Tuesday, the Shelton Police Department responded to four overnight burglaries on Howe Avenue in Shelton. Officers responding discovered that Subway Restaurant, City Styles Barbershop, Grow Restaurant, and M&T Spa were burglarized. The businesses that were burglarized all had rocks thrown through the front window to gain entry. On the same day, Seymour and Ansonia experienced similar burglaries during the early morning hours, and Strafford and Milford had experienced similar incidents in recent in the recent past. Well, a joint investigation between Shelton, Seymour, Strafford, and Milford led to the arrest of 37-year-old Roman Nieves and 34-year-old Karen Nixon, both of Bridgeport. Both will be arraigned in court today. But let's switch gears now and throw it over to Frank Granito, who is so excited for Christmas, you're not going to believe it. Check this out. <laughs> and you can't see it, but he has pants to match, people. Of course, it's the full it's matching full suit. suit. Kate, thank you so much, and happy winter to you as the <laughs> fourth and final season of the year has officially begun. And what a great start to the season it is going to be today with mostly sunny skies and temperatures expected in the low to mid-40s. We're going to see periods of sun and clouds this afternoon with a light breeze before mostly cloudy skies over night and a low of 30 degrees. Tomorrow will bring on and off periods of sun throughout the day. Temperatures will reach into the mid 40s, but that number is going to feel a lot closer to 30 with increasing winds tomorrow afternoon. Gusts could reach as high as 35 miles per hour and there is a chance for an afternoon shower in parts of the county before clearing up overnight as we head towards the holiday weekend. And the holiday weekend is going to start off with a beautiful day on Friday. Plenty of sunshine from dawn until dusk with an expected high of 44 degrees. A light breeze between 5 and 7 miles per hour in the afternoon. Then some cloud cover moving in overnight before a wet Christmas Eve. But everything should clear up and another sunny sky expected Sunday as Christmas makes its way towards Fairfield County. All right. I mean, that suit has everything. Snowmen, reindeer, Christmas trees, it holly. Is, it is the official beginning of winter bear? suit. Yes, I mean, yeah. Bears. It's, there's a lot going on. All right. Well, you'll be able to stare more at Frank's suit later on when he does his Nutmeg Sports Update. But we're going to take a break. Donald Ang also coming up with a look back on this day in history after this. Connecticut is coming back to hometown banking. To a partner that makes small businesses feel big. Where community comes first. Where high-tech tools go hand-in-hand -hand with a human touch where you get the know-how only neighbors can deliver, where saving time is important too. It's time to expect more. It's time to bank well. Bank smart. Bank local. Bank well. Visit Bevel Saddlery this holiday season, not just for equestrians. Celebrating 30 years in New Canaan, we offer an exciting selection of men and women's sportswear and exquisite gifts, from home decor, hostess gifts, stocking stuffers, to items for horse and hound. You'll find something for everyone on your list. We carry brands like Barber, Dewberry, Patagonia, and local gift companies. Located at 50 Pine Street, New Canaan, next to Walgreens, and online at bevel.com. 
At In Sports Trumbull, the game is always on inside. Recently renovated and home to one of Connecticut's largest indoor turf fields, In Sports is a multi-sport recreation center providing state-of-the-art facilities for league play, camps, and youth programs. Sign up now for In Sports Fall and Winter Lacrosse Clinics and Leagues. With programs ranging from first grade all the way through high school, there's something for every lacrosse player at all levels. Programs include college coaches clinics, youth box winter leagues, high school winter leagues, and seven-on-seven tournaments. For more information and pricing, visit us at insportcenters.com. Like us on Facebook. Hi, I'm Denise Pigregoli, host of The Drive, here every Tuesday on the HN Network. It's about how you fuel your mind, your body, your spirit that creates the life you live with people, places, ideas, and organizations that move us forward mindfully and consciously. Tune into The Drive here on the HN Network, Tuesdays at 1230. I'm John Kovach. I'm a newspaper editor. I'm a high school football coach. I'm a television presenter. And I want you to love fishing as much as I do. Tune into Yankee Fisherman. Thursdays at 1 on the HAN Network. It's like going to the tackle shop without leaving your office. We're back on this December 21st edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski and we're throwing it over to boring Donald Dang. He's not in a Christmas suit and if you missed Frank in the first segment you'll see what I'm talking about pretty <laughs> soon. But Don, we're so happy to have you. What happened on this day in history? Uh, kind of boring stuff. You know how it goes. Uh, no, we started in 1620. Uh, William Bradford and the Mayflower Pilgrims land at what is now known as Plymouth Rock in Massachusetts. The first reference to any specific rock in Plymouth Harbor is actually a couple decades later when the colonists moved it to clear space for a dock. You can still visit the rock, sort of. It's been moved and broken several times, including once on purpose to get it to fit into its new enclosure. Now we go to 1937. The first full-length animated feature film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, has its official premiere. Based on the German fairy tale by the Grimm brothers, it was a critical and commercial success. Adjusted for inflation, it has earned an estimated $938 million, making it, by far, the most popular animated Disney feature of all time. Uh, right, it's in there number nine, right after The Exorcist, and right before Star Wars The Force Awakens. To 1988, a bomb explodes aboard Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie, Dumfries, and Galloway, Scotland, killing 270 people, including 11 on the ground. Libyan intelligence officer Abdelbasset al-Magrahi was jailed for life after being found guilty of 270 counts of murder. Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi in 2003 actually accepted responsibility for the bombings, let's say under extreme duress, and paid restitution to the families, though never admitted, ordering the attack. Finally, now we go to 1995 for this. The, that, the end there, that was actually Israeli troops leaving the city of Bethlehem as it passes from Israeli to Palestinian control. The uh, city's a bit of a reach, it's actually more like a little town. In Hebrew, Bethlehem actually means house of bread and it dates back to at least 1350 BCE. Its most famous site, unquestionably, the Church of the Nativity, built in 327, destroyed in 529 by its Samaritans, presumably not the good ones, and rebuilt in the 7th century. Despite the pervasiveness of religion in the West Bank, 98% of the residents there are Sunni Muslim. Relations between the religions are actually pretty good. The current mayor of Bethlehem, a woman, and a Catholic. As you look back in history for today, December 21st, and I'm Don Ling. All right, thanks so much, Don. Well, back to local news in some good traffic news. For those driving in Ridgefield this week, the State Department of Transportation confirmed that work will be suspended at the Route 35 bridge project by the Fox Hill condominiums for the entire week before Christmas. That suspension of work was announced in early December after Main Street jeweler and landlord Wayne Adesi led a lobbying campaign for a holiday shopping halt to that job. The construction does create long lines of alternating one-way traffic in the middle of the day. The suspension of construction as originally announced is expected to last past New Year's. But let's throw it back over to Mr. Christmas, Frank Renito. Thank you, Kate. I like that title. I'm willing to stick with that moving <laughs> forward right. here, at least till the end of the year.
But the HAN Network was live yesterday at Ridgefield High School for our first girls br basketball broadcast of the winter season, featuring the Fairfield Ward Mustangs and the Ridgefield Tigers. This was the second time in the past seven days that the two teams squared off. Round one coming in the Massac Tip-Off Classic Championship game last Wednesday, which the Tigers won by a score of 53-39. to 39. Despite missing several starters due to injury, the Mustangs came up just short yesterday afternoon as they fell 50-3 on the road against the Tigers. Ridgefield was led by Caroline Colonel, who had 14 points, and Megan O'Hara, who had 13, as the Tigers came back from a first quarter deficit and improved to 4-0 on the season. Let's take a look at the highlights from yesterday's game. Welcome to the gymnasium here at Ridgefield High School as we get set for an FCAC girls basketball matchup between the Fairfield Ward Mustangs and the Richfield Tigers. There, Frank. Shot might have been tipped, but doesn't matter as Seta knocks down another one. She's up to five points early on. When Julia Middlebrook to the paint, tries a little runner and one, gets it to go. Nice job. Nice job by Middlebrook there. Over here, back to the hands of Polk. She sees some room, spots up the mid-range and knocks down another jumper. Tie game and now an opportunity for the Tigers to take the lead into halftime. Very strong this year, Frank. And the Tigers will remain undefeated. They move to... The Mustangs now fall to 1-3 and three on the season, but talking with Coach Danko after the game, he feels confident in his group, getting younger players experience, and looks forward to getting his senior starters back soon. Deja Polk for Fairfield Ward led all scores in the game with 18 points. Looking at some of the other girls' basketball scores from yesterday, McMahon tops Central 45-23, to Staples over St. Joseph's 45-39, Norwalk a winner against Darianne 56 to 46, Ludlow tops Wilton 48 45, and Trumbull a winner over Danbury 48 to 27. For more on yesterday's girls basketball action as well as a preview of this afternoon's boys hockey, tune into Nutmeg Sports with Kevin Coleman and myself at two o'clock. That's going to do it for this Nutmeg Sports update. Let's send it back over to Kate. All right, we're going to have to say goodbye to the suit and to Frank, <laughs> but it is back at 2 o'clock. We're going to step out for a break. When we come back, I'm joined by Dr. Eric Collins of Silver Hill Hospital, and we're going to be talking about securing medications this holiday season. More on that after this. Hi, folks. This is Dr. Jeffrey Hubscher from the Noah's Ark Animal Hospital in Danbury and the South Salem Animal Hospital. There's something new and important going on at our two hospitals and probably eventually everywhere. It's called Fear Free. That means making sure that our pets are no longer frightened or stressed at the vet. We are Fear Free certified, the only ones in the area. We have the softer, gentler, better approach. Come see us at Noah's Ark Animal Hospital in Danbury or South Salem Animal Hospital. Would you like to be able to help in an emergency? Do you know what to do when a family member is in distress? Learn life-saving skills and become a certified EMT in New Canaan. Whether you're looking for a career in healthcare or you want to give back to your community, the training is invaluable. The New Canaan Volunteer Ambulance Corps is offering an EMT certification course starting on January 16th, two nights a week and some Saturdays. It's filling up quickly, so call 203-594-3535 to get involved. New Canaan Volunteer Ambulance Corps, neighbors helping neighbors. Find out more at ncvac.org. This holiday season, the Glass House Design Store offers an edited selection of gifts, objects, and artist editions that represent the iconic Philip Johnson House. The store offers unique and specially sourced objects locally and from around the world, and proceeds from the design store help support preservation projects at the Glass House property. Shop the design store at the Glass House Visitor Center in New Canaan, now open through November 30th, and available anytime online at designstore.theglasshouse.org. The holidays are a wonderful time to spend with families and friends, sharing a fantastic meal, football season is in full swing, the fishing has been unbelievable, and it's time to make a list and check it twice. Stop at the dock shop, get a fix of summer, and browse loads of new products, including fishing tackle, accessories, clothing, jewelry, and home decor. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The dock shop. 51 Tokenik Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or DocShop.com. 
At That Personal Touch in New Canaan, we have personalized gifts for all occasions. Family owned since 1983, we specialize in expert engraving done on premises. From engraved sterling silver and pewter frames, wood cutting boards, slate cheese servers and trays, leather embossing, crystal engraving and glassware, every gift becomes unique and personal. And just in time for the season, we have a variety of personalized Christmas ornaments. Visit That Personal Touch at 102 Main Street in New Canaan and at tptengravers.com. What's happening up in Hartford and what's trending in the nutmeg state? Join Kate Chaplinski and Josh Fisher on CT Pulse Live Wednesdays at 12.30 to find out. We talk to the leaders and newsmakers while breaking down the stories you should be paying attention to each week. With the help of HAN's editorial cartoonist Doug Smith, we take a humorous look at the news of the week. We talk about everything you were told you should avoid bringing up in polite company. CT Pulse Wednesdays at 12.30 on the HAN Network. Welcome back to this Wednesday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski and joined by Dr. Eric Collins, the Physician-in-Chief at Silver Hill Hospital. Dr. Collins, happy to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me. All right, so we're talking about something important. Christmas is just a few days away. People are going to be having big holiday gatherings. We want to talk about securing medications during that time. Now, first, what do we mean by medications? What do you think is important for people to know or secure? The most important medications to secure are the ones, uh, well, I'm going to start with the prescription opioids. Painkillers, strong painkillers with a very high potential to cause addiction. Um, at this time, for the holidays, it, from my perspective, it's always important to lock these away, all year round. It takes on somewhat greater importance during the holidays when people are having guests in their home, family, friends, relatives of other kinds. But um, when, when people are coming in, to the home, if they have a problem with drugs, uh, they will not uncommonly <coughs> make sure they find their way to a bathroom with a medicine cabinet. And many people still keep their medications in medicine cabinets or in other places that are not that hard to find, and people do go looking. In a busy house, lots of people in, in the home, people will go look. I, I know this directly because I treat patients who tell me they do exactly this, and they do it on a regular basis, even all year round, but the holidays offer more opportunities to visit. Uh, so I'm talking first about prescription opioids, but really about any medication that has an, a, a potential for addiction. Mm -hmm. So that includes sedative medications like benzodiazepines, so that would be Xanax or Valium or Ativan or Clonopin, that type of medication. Um, and not, not to be forgotten, uh, I, we spend most time thinking about opioids, but also the stimulant medications mm. that are prescribed at really quite high rates for um, both adolescents, even younger children, adolescents, and adults for the treatment of att attention deficit disorder. Those are also a, a great risk for addiction. People will go into medicine cabinets. I promise you I treat the people who do. Do you find that people are surprised that there might be someone in their life that's going to be going through their medicine cabinets? Do you think people, as much as we talk about the opioid epidemic and things like that, do you think it still surprises people that someone in their family might be struggling with that? That's a great question. I think it does. Mm. I think people, people may not be so surprised that someone in the family struggles with addiction. Sometimes, you know, it, it does run in family. Where should people lock them? Where should they put them? So the easiest thing is to buy some kind of, if you have a safe already, lock them in the safe. If you don't have a safe, buy a, a medicine, a lockable medicine chest or, or, or box, and um, th those are the best places. I mean, you could try to hide them, and that does help somewhat because people won't have that much time unsupervised in various rooms in the house. You could put them in a room, if you have a room that can be locked, mm. uh, then, then just preventing access to the room where these things are would, would be an important barrier. Those are the main places we lock them. Or now, we tell people to lock them. We do hear all the time now about the opioid epidemic. As a professional in this field, how widespread is it? It's widespread. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you know, over the last 25 years, there's been a dramatic increase in opioid prescribing. It came about for a variety of reasons, good reasons. Um, the problem is, I mean, they were, they were thought to be good reasons. In hindsight, they were mistaken. Uh, the problem is they're has been so much opioid medication provided out in the, to the public that many new people are trying these medicines. So it's pretty widespread. I mean, the overdose death rates have been increasing every year for the last at least 17 years uh, from the 
CDC, Centers for Disease Control, uh, statistics. They've been going up every year. They go up in lockstep with uh, the amount prescribed, really just it, they're parallel lines. Um, and then uh, treatment admissions for addiction to opioids have gone up similarly. Um, we may be, I, I think we're turning the tide mm. in terms of creating new people with addiction because of a whole host of efforts, new CDC guidelines on prescribing opioids, new requirements for doctors to check the prescription records. Uh, these haven't been available until the last few years, but now they're available and doctors are required to check. So we are, we are stemming the tide of the uh, over-prescription of these powerful and dangerous medications, but there's still a very large group of people addicted. Now, at the holidays, you're seeing a lot of family members maybe you don't see every day. What do you suggest for people that maybe see a family member and all of a sudden they're concerned that maybe that person's on something, maybe that person's struggling with something? What do you suggest they do? I know it could be difficult, especially during a holiday, to confront that. Sure. Um, so the first thing is for everybody to remember that addiction is treatable. It is chronic often, remitting and relapsing, uh, typically remitting and rela relapsing, but treatable. It responds to treatment. Um, so. While I, I generally don't advise people have this hard discussion when someone's intoxicated. So if someone appears completely out of it, nodding out, glassy-eyed, you know, somehow really altered from their usual uh, self, then I don't think that's uh, likely to be a good time for family members to speak to someone. So, you know, the next day, uh, assuming they're not, and, and also not necessarily in a public way in a, at a family gathering where, uh, that's not likely to be a, an effective place. But a few people, the closest people, the ones, um, you know, it, whether it's parents or spouses or children sometimes, um, have a discussion and express the concern and encourage treatment um, or at least seeking some help. And then people can certainly call uh, their primary care doctors to f help get a referral. They can call Silver Hill. They can call any treatment provider that they know or can access. Uh, if people start that process, um, you know, and many people are afraid to. I mean, yeah. not saying anything only prolongs the period during which someone is continuing to use. Right. And Dr. Collins, what would you say to someone that's maybe feeling very alone, very overwhelmed, whether they're a family member that sees another family member struggling or the person that's actually struggling with the addiction? What would you say to them? Um, help is available. Help, get help. Call, ask for, ask for help. Um, if uh, lack of insurance or um, some other obstacle might be in the way financially, uh, or, or maybe even embarrassment of going to the family doctor, go to a walk-in clinic, go to an AA meeting or an NA meeting or some meeting. Those are free and relatively widely available, easy to find on the internet. Go ask for help. Go find someone who can help point you in a direction that can lead to recovery. All right, well, Dr. Collins, thank you so much for joining us. Such important messages right before the holidays. We really appreciate it. My pleasure, thanks All for right. having me. Well, we're gonna wrap things up here on your coffee break. CT Pulse coming up at 12.30, Nutmeg Sports at two o'clock, and we'll see you tomorrow for your coffee break at 11. Have a great day.